Well, even their head coach said that it uh, wasn't a Picasso. Boston Bruins win in overtime 2-1. Over the Montreal Canadiens, Jim Montgomery, post-game interview with Brick, admitted as such. They started out well in the first period. Energy, the first five, six minutes or so. They had some good stuff. They end up getting an early lead, tied up by Montreal in the first. Nobody scores in the second or third. They go to overtime. 25 seconds in, Jake DeBrus scores on a beautiful pass from Brad Marchand. And while the picture wasn't beautiful, the result, the end result, somebody found it pretty. You know what I mean? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Mm-hmm. The Bruins went through an 82-game season. You're not going to ever, always going to have scintillating, spectacular games. But the Bruins win in Montreal. And uh, I don't know if they get rid or extricate the bad taste of that St. Louis loss. But on the other hand, you know what? They balance it out. Now you get ready for Saturday. Welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, presented by Berkshire Bank. This show is also made possible by the Omni Boston Hotel at the Seaport, Sparks Hockey, and Apex Entertainment. Also, please do not forget to check out BruinsAuthentics.com. That's with an S. BruinsAuthentics.com. Check out game-used uh, items like sticks and gloves and helmets and pucks. It's the place to go for Boston Bruins memorabilia. Go to Boston or go to BruinsAuthentics.com. We'll also tell you about March to a Million, the uh, Boston Bruins Foundation 50-50. That is some great stuff. All right, Razor, you had a lot of these games as a player. You know what? You figure out a way to get through them. It's not that you're not trying. It just isn't. It's just an average day at the office. That's what it ends up being on the ice. Yeah, and the good teams win. The good teams win these games. At the end of the season, you're going to get a lot of these where one team is out of it completely. The other team's in it. They're facing each other. One team's trying to get through the end of the... Both teams are trying to get through to the end of the season for one reason or another. And and that's what we saw tonight. It, the Bruins started out really well. I thought the first 15 minutes, they showed up on time, got the early one nothing lead, made one bad defensive play in their own zone, and then the game grinded to a halt and then there's going to be a few more of them there there really will be but but i like the fact love the fact they won in overtime listen you got to take it. They, they they, they, yeah Linus needed it uh the players needed it that that's it's just nice for them to to have gotten that and not have that that shitty feeling again after an overtime loss or a shootout loss and saying ah we got a point the biggest purpose of this game purposes three plural i think would be all right one Get a win after that St. Louis loss. That was first. Yep. Two, see what Andrew Peake looks like. Get him into the lineup. I don't know if this was as quickly as they were expecting, given the fact that I think they would have liked him to have maybe another just full day of practice, morning skate, whatever. Go hang with the, the guys. Team, hang yeah. out. It's, you know, that. Uh, have an extra day. glass of wine, maybe, the, sure. night, the night before. Not Just be relaxed on your dinner. Do you know, hang out. Right. Don't, you like, don't have get, to. Right, take, be in bed at nine thirty. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you know, take your time, you know, getting in, in ingratiated or ingrained with your teammates. But with the illness to Matt Grizzlick and, and and James Van Reems, like it turned out, they needed to play him. Shattenkirk was the scratch. Pika righty shot comes in and plays with Parker Wotherspoon. So that was another purpose of this game, and also the other purpose ends up being Johnny Beecher getting back into the lineup because of the illness to JVR, and so he gets an opportunity to get called back up on emergency basis, be with the team. He's been playing better down in Providence the last couple of games, and so he earned it. And we'll talk about those. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. That's the, the, the biggest, those, those things are the biggest thing about this. Let's start with Peak. Peak played 17 minutes, uh, 45 seconds of that shorthanded. He had a couple of blocks. He had a couple of kind of just where he killed the play, so to speak, you know, where he, he got pucks, moved it. Um, I found it to be. Uh, I found his game to be uh, reliable to, in this one. Positionally sound, strong with the puck. Uh, didn't seem nervous at all. And for your first game, by no means the toughest opponent, by no means the most intense. But he had what I would term a very professional game. So I'll take that as a good mark for this one. Great mark. Great way to start your Bruins career against the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, the rivalry, uh, of course, not quite as heated as it has been over the years, but he looked the part, looked, looked exactly as advertised through one game. Mm-hmm. So, so let's just continue to see how he adapts and figures out how the Bruins play. And uh, the Flyers will be a better test. Ottawa might be a better test. 
offensively and then of course the Rangers Physically will too. be Rangers will be tough so yeah. so we're, we get to get into the nitty-gritty gets to work into that and and see how he's going to affect this playoff run so he said in you know pregame stuff that it was somewhat similar system to the Bruins but there's still so many little nuances yeah that that's that's the biggest thing yeah it's all right because every team yes not every team plays same system by any stretch but a lot of them play similar yep. we're seeing more and more of this hybrid zone d's right yep. they're all doing that and they're trying to copy the bruins because it's been Basically. so successful right right well julian started it yeah 15 years ago that's right. right and cassidy continues it montgomery continues it but there's still the little nuances you talked about the short pass to the center the outlet there an awful lot that can be a great play it can be a dangerous play like tonight we saw it tonight the goal that nick suzuki scored started off of a, a, a an attempted pass from the bruins d zone to the center slot that didn't work um but also there's just communication with your teammates literally just knowing you know guys nicknames and everything just knowing where to you know the voice um, then there's also just, you know, where your goalie wants you as a defenseman, too. Let's talk about that for a minute. What would you do with new defensemen that would come in? What would you, would you talk to them at length? Were you a guy that didn't talk to him much? What, what was that like? No, you would talk, like, a lot of communication out on the ice. There's so much communication on the bench between coach, with anyone new. That's every shift you're coming off and you're talking to your partner as a defenseman, you're talking to your coach, you're talking to other defensemen that, that were watching play. So you're talking nonstop as a goaltender, I'm yelling and, and overly, overly vocal while those new players are out on the ice, the young guys on the ice, trying to talk them through what's going on out there, where they should be playing, what, what needs to happen. Just knowing that, and once you get playing with guys, there's certain times where you recognize you don't have to say something to guys. Mm -hmm. But but when when you're not sure of a person or a player, you're you're overly communicative. Yeah, and I think especially for a defenseman, the first pass is very important, and knowing again where to look for it. It's not that you don't. Again, you got to use your instinct. I get that. You know, I understand that. But been there. But you you. Teams have different routes that they like to take. They have different outlets they'd like to make or rely upon. And, yeah. and, and literally three feet can make all the difference in the world or five degrees can make all the difference in the world on the route, the angle, whatever you want to term it, that the team takes. You know, this is where we like to break out. We like to push up the wall, but then we like to slash across top of the circle. Some teams will say, no, let's slash across below the circle or whatever it is. You know, I'm, I'm making up instances here. So all these little things come into play that as you said, get talked about all the time. And, and individually, where guys like taking passes, some guys will hit, take it on the back end. Some only want it on their foot. Like there's, and the nuance of that, that's, that's inches. And that's the, the game that's being played out there. That's the level that's being played, the level that's expected. And, and a lot of that, like you said, is reactionary and instinctual, but that also when you're trying to give your teammates where they want it, how they want it, 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 it takes think, some time to think, figure it yeah. out. Like so one guy likes it the same. The, nobody likes it the same. Right. No one likes the passes the same. No one likes to skate the same. No one moves the same. And, and everyone has their own nuance. So that's, that's, the, that's what's difficult being the new guy. Yeah. So, but he did a nice job. Yes, 17 he did. minutes, nice a, a nice thing. And, and, and he looked good with Parker Watherspoon, who I'm going to – you know, continue to compliment for his ability to play with anybody, play both sides. Um, you know, this is a kid who just gets it. Yep. He just, he just, he just gets it. What, what, what he has to do, which is simpler, simplify. There hasn't been any drop off. There's been maybe no, not, like one game. Yeah, where, but we, you, we, he doesn't, that doesn't count, right? Like, like there hasn't been like two or three games. No, no, no. It's been one game or a couple periods, but like that's going to happen to everyone. That's just right. that's just what it is. There hasn't. He's it's it's been it's been a great season for him. It has really that's great. Why he season. got the one year extension mm -hmm. at NHL money guaranteed. All right, uh, the other guy that came up, John Beecher, Johnny Beecher. Um, Ended up having a very nice game as Beecher ended up going uh, eight for eleven in the faceoff circle. The only player that he lost a faceoff to tonight was Nick Suzuki. He went two of uh, two wins five no two of five against Suzuki, but otherwise he won every draw against everybody yeah. else. Take it. Um, he skated well. Yeah. Uh, again, faceoffs were good. Uh, you know he. He was physically involved. So, 
you know, I, I, again, it's just one game. But you take the positive out of that. If, if he can be a player that, and I think he, Razor, I think he's got to play the middle, I think, because you want him taking face-offs. So if you're going to have him taking face-offs all the time, right, Yeah. on his line, he's just going to end up lining up in the middle defensively more often than not. And it probably helps for getting his feet moving more. I don't know what that does to a guy, Boquist, who seems to, seemed to flourish in the center role too. By playing on the wall more, is that going to hinder him? But I think the benefit of Beecher's face-off ability and his length, I think you have to give him the consideration at center. I think so. I think it was pretty telling seeing him go over the boards for the first the face off in overtime mm -hmm. uh, that which he lost which, which he did yeah. lose he did funny. win that draw dude like <laughs> final with like yeah that that one you you know cut an arm off for to win uh but that's telling that that shows what the coaches think that they need in that kind of a situation in that dire situation you know to win a face off they put him out there the the concern is after tonight, and it's not Beecher's fault because I thought he played really well. I thought he did everything. You know, he came back with a good, a good vengeance coming up from the minors. Is how the third line didn't work, and not the first, not the, 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 first, the, the first in the first in, in iteration of it, and then, and then you're bumping Boquit. Like it, that's that's my only thing is that it those. That third and fourth has been very good and together for five games, essentially. But JVR wasn't there. But JVR was out. It just didn't look as... as com I like the fourth line as it was with Brazado mm -hmm. down there. Um, and I think he'll... I, I do think, and that's why Monty moved him back there after the first period, and he moved Boquist up. I, I think that... I don't know. I mean, Lauco, Brazo... Beecher ended up being the fourth line. It has been Boquist, Lauco, and Brazo. Yeah. I love the fact now that you have competition for, you've got four, if not five guys for that, assuming everybody's healthy, for that fourth line. You got to figure it out. If that does mean that, I don't know, that you, that you, you Beecher and Lauco, maybe. I mean, what does Pat Maroon do now? But he's, he's at least, what, three weeks away yeah. from coming back. But I like the fact that you've got different looks. I, listen, this is what happened. In the first period, Geeky, Brazo on the right, Frederick on the left. I think they're, if you take the, if you look at total attempts, if I remember correctly, it was like 2 4 8 against or 2, two 4 9 against, something like that. It wasn't good. It was the most noticeably uh, inefficient line for the Bruins in the first period. Everybody else was good. So right away, Montgomery changed it. And then they changed it. They flipped it that. And when it became Frederick on the right, Geeky in the middle, and, and, and then Boquist on the left, they ended up having a positive overall. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. They, 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 again, that, that um, adjustment that the coaches made worked. And um, it just, I, I'm curious how, how it fits. I'm curious how that, that puzzle piece fits down there. But I'm not disagreeing that that Beecher and his faceoff prowess, the way that they've been losing faceoffs in critical moments, is is very helpful for him. Yeah. Does it keep him up? I mean, it might. It just might because, you know, come playoff time, come playoff time, you need those critical faceoffs. He should. I just, I just think that he's still a young player. What is he? Twenty three, I believe, but young in terms of pro experience because of you know the college route. I just think he needs to continue learning the consistency factor. I do. He talked about it, you know, uh, early this year about how he learned about what details meant as a pro, how he had to bring it all the time. But then he got sent back down, so maybe he needed another re-education on it. And there's nothing wrong with that if it's going to make him a better player. And that's my hope. I don't know if it's going to happen that way, bud, but that's my hope. Yeah, of course. That's his hope, too. And... uh it was a good start tonight back into that. Now he has to, he has to bring it um, as this competition or the level gets a little higher here after, after this week. Uh, our Apex most entertaining moment of the game. For a game that didn't have a lot of entertaining moments, is it 
as simply yeah. stating that the, the Heinen goal, is that the most entertaining moment? Well, was no, the, the overtime goal, no. The overtime yeah. goal, okay. I mean, uh, that's what about, what st- about, Captain Obvious. Okay, what about, uh, I was trying to think there was, uh, well, there was well, the pasta, pasta breakaway. Pasta, yeah, I missed the that net. That wasn't. There was literally only three plays. Yeah. <laughs> there was only three plays the whole game. Yeah, there was nothing. It, it really wasn't that entertaining of a game. No. Well, but Apex Entertaining is... Enter- we could have. We would have been better off riding go-karts at Apex. We would have. That we would have, have been probably, more enjoyable. Yes, yes we would have. Would have Apex Entertainment in Marlboro, 100,000 square feet of fun. Go check it out at apexentertainment.com. Apex, the most entertaining moment of the game here on Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. Sparks Hockey, uh, well, it's not entertaining, but it is incredibly efficient. When you want to sharpen your skates, go to sparkshockey.com. Choose which sharpener you want, which wheel you want. Sparkshockey.com, the place to go to check out the best, the finest at-home sharpening device. Um, and you can use the code MORNINGBREW, or they also have specials on their website, too. They've really become the ultimate at-home skate sharpener, sparkshockey.com. And the Omni Boston Hotel at the Seaport is the premier place to stay in the Seaport. It has become the hippest, hottest place, this area of the city of Boston. There's a lot of fun stuff to do there. A lot of great restaurants in the area. A lot of just, you know, great places to go out at night, too. And if you're looking for a place to stay uh, or just to hang out, even if you live locally, go hang out at the Omni Boston Hotel at the Seaport. But if you're coming in and you're looking for a room, make sure to use the code PROBREW, P-R-O-BREW, uh, B-R-U, PROBREW. You'll get 15% off their best listed rate on their website. Um, this is a fun place to be, folks. I'm telling you. And uh, the amount of people that are finding the sporting club, too, mm-hmm. is just awesome. They, they just do such a great job there. It's a sports bar, but it's not a dingy, tight sports bar. It's big, it's brash, it's classy, and it's got 12, and they're actually adding TVs, 12 huge screens. They're adding even more. So go check out the Omni Boston Hotel at the Seaport. And again, use the code PROBRU, P-R-O-B-R-U, when you go to book your room. Uh, lastly, the March to Millions, Boston Bruins 50-50, over $470,000 right now. Go to Boston's Bruin, bostonbruins.com slash 50-50. You can check out other prizes, too, that they're drawing, uh, but you really want to go check that out. It is a great cause. Uh, a great cause for this team as well has been Danton Heinen. Boy, <laughs> has he been a great cause. He has been a great Addition. Uh, what does he have? Four points now more now than he had all of with with Pittsburgh. Yeah, last year twenty six to twenty two. Twenty six. You you talked in post game razor about you know sign me up for thirty points when when Heinen signed uh, crazy at the beginning of the season. I'm gonna get greedy. Give me thirty four. I mean, what do we have? Sixteen games, fourteen games left. Yeah, and he's playing with those guys. Right. So thirty. Yeah, nine point. Yeah, he's probably not gonna get the thirty five. No, thir- give me 33. Yeah. Give me no, 33. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's on the board. Seven points is on the board for sure for him. Yeah. Um, it's a hell of a year. It sure is. And it gives him a great look. He's going to get a contract somewhere else then if oh, he doesn't yeah. stay with Boss. You know, yeah, he can, he can go find some term with the salary cap going up. Going up, right. And, and you know, the, he's no question. He's kept himself in the league to, to become that extra pro. It's nice to see it work for both. It worked for the Bruins, uh-huh. obviously. It's worked for Danton. Um, it's great to see. He had a beautiful goal in the first period where the puck uh, caromed off the uh, goaltender, and then he was able to corral it while le- uh, almost like flailing backwards. And as he got pushed by Slefkovsky, uh, the young uh, Montreal Canadian star player, he was able to get it and, and, and slide it into the net. Or not even slide it. He was able to really push it into the net. It was great. And so Danton Heinen has been somebody who's been, you know, important to this team. Again, I guess Danton Heinen's success is kind of like the rest of this Boston Bruins team. You, you really didn't know what to think. You hoped that it would be good. You're looking at a guy like Danton Heinen, you're like, hey, you know what? He scored early last year. He, he scored with the Penguins the year before. Could he bring something you didn't really know? And he's brought it. He's brought it nicely. So it's nice to see that. Have I asked you this before? Did you ever play with a guy? That was a PTO that ended up signing and doing Ooh. well. And, and for and sure, I did. For sure, I did. Uh, but that's a tough one to come off the top of my head like that. Okay, um, that's fine. it's not fair of me. Just, no, you know. no, no. It's 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 some. Sometimes I would have it, but definitely there's PTO guys, um, and then there's PTO guys, and I think Danton was always a target. 
not a typical PTO where maybe I'll come in and if I don't get a spot here, at least I'm playing preseason games and someone else will see me. Right. This seemed to be the plan and with the cap and everything else. And he's paid dividends. And, and again, you have to give, you have to give this group of the organization credit for recognizing what they think works. And they did it with JVR. They did it with Danton this year. They've done it in previous years with other players. And um, they know what works here. They, they, they have a really good feel, a really good sense of what kind of player, what kind of person, what kind of um, character works in this team, on this team, with this group. And you have to give the Bruins a lot of credit for, for nosing those guys out. Um, Zaka, six games now, five goals, four assists. So he continues Vital. his scoring ways. Vital. Uh, Pasternak on the right side there. It, it was an all right game from him. I mean, it was, yeah, I, I mean, it was, a, it was a great shot on the goal from high yep. and he should have scored the breakaway. Um, and then you really, you know, goal and assist typical pass the night. Yeah. Um, but, but not a lot. The power play didn't work very well. So that always, you know, kind of shines a light on David if, if it doesn't. All right, let's talk about the overtime goal. You get Jake DeBrus scoring from Brad Marchand as we wrap up this morning. Brew with Jaffe and Razor. The Bruins do lose the faceoff to start overtime. And again, the attempt was to win it with putting Beecher out there. Marchand had already been tapped. We saw it on Nesson's feet that, that uh, Montgomery told him, you're, you know, you're taking Beecher right away. And Marchand nodded. Beecher loses the draw, but it goes to an area where he can still change. Uh, or, and then Marchand jumps on the ice. Puck goes deep into the Bruins zone at Matheson, a nice skating defenseman, comes down the right side, works all the way behind the net, going over to the left wing offensive corner for Montreal. But Hampus Lindholm brought him over there, sealed him on the wall. Well, DeBrus came a bit low, kind of helped out with the, the process as well. And then Cole Caulfield does, as you said, a little flyby, just a little bit. He's hoping that the puck is going to squirt out and that two Bruins would be along the wall and then he could drive to the net with it instead it goes up the wall and then Marshan he coasts into it or accelerates into it DeBrusque absolutely puts the afterburners on through the neutral zone widens out a bit he once he finally realizes that it's a two-on-one he opens up just a little bit meaning to give Marshan a bigger area to make a pass if he was going to do that Marshan's a lefty coming down the right side he keeps the puck to the inside on his forehand for the most part by doing that, he, you know, if he goes to his backhand, which would have been foolish because then he's not a threat to shoot at all, he keeps it on his forehand, keeps the defenseman in between there, and he keeps the goaltender guessing just a little bit. The goalie has to stay uh, true to the shot. He then makes a gorgeous, it's not what you would call a high sauce by any, so it's a low sauce, it's a sharp sauce pass, though. And it lands, I mean, simultaneously, like, perfectly yeah. on the stick of DeBrusque. DeBrusque, instead of just shooting it, though, which you do an awful lot on that strong side, you get it, you just try to redirect it. I think he felt that Montembeau probably was already going to get, or perhaps get over there. He brings it across his body to the back end, gets Montembeau sliding from his left to his right. The net's open. He puts it in. Game over, 25 seconds in. Beautiful goal. Really, just a beautiful goal. It was a beauty. Absolute beauty. Great. Great pass by Marshy, uh, great handle by Jake DeBrus. Because again, that like you said, that that pass landed right on the tape. It didn't, it didn't slide. It didn't sauce and then slide onto the and stick of DeBrus. And there was no room for Jake to pause. And no, rally. he couldn't. He like had to, he had to catch it exactly, and he caught it perfectly, handled it perfectly. You talked about Montembeau having to respect Marshy as soon as that pass sauced a little bit. He was a little behind. That's why he overplayed it the way he did. DeBrusque recognized he overplayed it and slid it into the net so uh i was not it was it was a fantastic overtime goal we haven't seen enough of those beautiful overtime goals this season so that should be enjoyed points in four of six now for jake debrus three of those games he's had multi-point games mm -hmm. marshan now well he had a goal and assist against pittsburgh so but he has now uh points in three of four and four of six but he only has one goal in 11 in 11 right yeah, I looked he at hasn't that scored earlier. on the power play the other one right. too is coil the other and we typically don't do i was just looking at that because i was like hey, you know what coil hasn't done you know and i know he's been sick this week so i wasn't expecting much tonight but he's only got he's only had he's three goals in 17 games yeah 
and goals in only two, he got two goals in one of those games. So the only goals in two of his or 15 of 17 games, he yeah. hasn't scored uh, 10 points in those 17 games. So that, that that's the one where it, like, you could get a little more out of that. Like to see that. I'd love he was on such a good pace. Like yeah. you, we were talking 70. We, we knew that was a stretch. You know, we knew we'd get a little, a stretch like this, but you know, you still, he's got eight points to see. He needs to get to 60. Like you're this close, get to 60. Right. You have to push to that. Yeah. Yeah. Push. And they need him to, we yeah. said that all along. They need Brad to score on the power plays. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He's got to score goals. And, yeah, and they- I think the 399, like the 400 is hard. Right, I think you're thinking about that, and I think he's thinking about that. Uh, when you get to 398, like you did, because January flew through, yeah, and you got right up to it, and then it's like, oh boy, and the All Star game came, and it's like, I got to now. I'm thinking about 400. Think when am I going to get the year it? he's had? Captain, yeah, thousand games, yeah, 400 goals. Uh, what else is? What other little milestones is, is has has he hit? There wasn't there another shorthanded goal. The shorthanded or the game winning goals. The, the, yeah, no, he's. I mean, he's he's cranking them out. But also, the, the think of the pressure. Yep. You know, if you think it's you know, four hundred goals is like so crazy. Like that's yeah. that's he's. I I think he's thinking about it. I think How he do is. Not? Yeah, exactly. How do you not? Is right. Um. Uh, but listen, if, if, if you said it, we were, was it on air? Was it off? I don't remember. We're talking about the power. Well, we got line. 900 points too. 900 points, right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. There was another, I knew there was another one. So, you know, the, the power play, um, and, I, and I'll, I'll, we'll wrap with this because we'll get out of here because unless you want to talk about the hot dogs in Montreal. No, no, we're Which good. I was never a huge fan of. Did you like the hot dogs in Montreal? Yeah, I like the hot dogs, yeah. Especially backup goalie because you're over on the other side. You can have hot dogs once that game right. gets through the first period. You can, you can. I just they're one hitters, right? Like bang, oh, bang. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You down them. Yeah. I would sometimes get a bad gut from them. No, oh, of course you would. Yeah, I mean that, that's the only. That's half the fun. Right. You get you get on the bus. You get on the plane after, and yeah, <laughs> guys would enjoy four that. Of them. Oh yeah, the guys would whistle those back after, and then and then sure enough, yeah, the guts had hurt. Molson a, Canadian a, maybe in the shower yes, too. So yes. the combination of the dogs yeah. and the Molson Canadian in the shower would be effective on the plane. I am true to my birth, though. I'm a I'm a legit. Chicago style hot dog fan. Okay, and others are fine. Don't get me wrong, but the, the quality of the Chicago ones are—they're just better. And the Montreal, yeah, these are the, these, these are not these are these are quality. No, 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 they're not quality. It's it's the steam bun. Yes. It's the it's the steaming of it and how the bun is it's a little grilled. Nice like that's and yes. that's the key. The dog itself is not quality. It's not thick. It's, it's no, kinda, it just it's just there. Yeah. And, and the, the problem is, I also am a bit of a food snob. I, I and people put ketchup on you. I said, no, I only put ketchup. No, on you it. so you, and those ketchup. dogs are built for ketchup. I, they're not built for mustard. You don't put those dogs don't work with mustard. They're only ketchup yeah, that's they're like a canadian thing i, I, I guess yeah I, I, I guess not I a mustard there. guy i can't go there yeah i can't that's but, why I, but I, like a chicago dog i recognize that those deserve mustard no you are not allowed to put ketchup that's on. right you are if you really yeah. want to and if you're a kid that's yeah. fine but otherwise no and and i used to work in the hot dog business there you go i did <laughs> i know how the to make hot biz. dogs yes <laughs> I was Abe Froman, the Sausage King of Chicago. That was one of my nicknames <laughs> and for years with the so guys good. on the team. It was so Abe good. Froman, yes, because I, I was with the Vienna Beef Company. So now, the, the, actually, ketchup doesn't interact with those hot dogs, on, and, it, and the mm-hmm. acid of the, the doesn't work well with it yep. at all. But yet, the tang of the, of the mustard is spectacular. But the ketchup on the Shan Show is, is, is important. I guess, yeah, that's why. Because I wasn't didn't a fan do it. Of it. That's I why I didn't like it. Right. Because so, I, so, like, I, I need you douse that thing in ketchup, and it's just perfect yeah. texture. I would eat all everything else in Montreal. Like yeah. that's all the other food. Yeah. But, the, um, where did I? Oh, the the Marchand thing is what I was just gonna yeah. say as we were talking about that. You know, he's you know he's got pressure on him here, but yet what a year! Think about all the things he's gone through. If he can get to the four hundred. Get past that. Maybe that'll just relax everything, and then they'll just, you know, there's no more milestones, so to speak. Just go play the rest of the way. They, they. Oh, this is what I was going to ask you about the power play because mm-hmm. we're talking about. Um, you said about Posternock, right? Posternock on the power play. We we're talking about how at times. 
He handles it a lot. He puts it into some funky spots, does some things that look like, wh why'd you do that, right? That type of thing, not, not sure things. And you talk about how he's kind of isolated on the power play because he's the main go-to guy. Yeah. They got to get a guy like Martian going. They got to get a coil again going. They need, they, they just Could they need ever that. get Zaka figuring Could, out that bumper? Could yeah. they have something, right? But I, I, you know what? And, and as you're just talking about it, it, it the vision of Marshawn going over on that left side and beating Col Spencer Martin yep. over high glove in the middle of the third period on yep. the power play. Like, okay, I want to see a couple of those. Switch, move them around, get Marshy. I feel like they've put him over on that island on the right side. It hasn't. He hasn't scored. Like he's he, not a one timer. He guy. doesn't have the one timer. He, it's not there, um, and and he, and it's making it hard for him to make plays from over there because they're just leaving him. And he, he, I'd love to see him get back over. I know that's David's property over on the left side, but if you could move David in or or Brad in there just a few times at a game to to try and get that wrister off. Um, I think it would benefit, but I think, I think overall, once he gets to 400, he's going to get to 405 pretty quickly. Like, I, I think that's where he's at. It, it is a big number. There's not, just not a lot of guys that got there. Well, that would be great to yeah. see. Um, all right. Uh, I think we are scheduled to do a show after Saturday's game. We decided to do that, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. So we'll do a show after the Philadelphia game. We uh, tentatively also have a special guest episode being recorded next week so that'll be a lot of fun too we'll keep you posted on that in the meantime we'll just say the Bruins win on Thursday night in Montreal two to one in overtime DeBrusque with the game winning goal the Bruins find themselves now at 39 wins on the season and 93 points what are they a point back of Florida if I remember because Florida are, lost yep that's right okay so they're point a point back, back. and uh, listen they're still second in the Atlantic and let's see what happens on Saturday night they take on uh, the Philadelphia Flyers John Tortorella will be back on the bench Thank you to all of our sponsors in this game. Thank you, listeners, to all that you do for us. Because without you, we are just two guys sitting here bullshitting, talking, and spending more time away from home than we probably <laughs> should. But anyways, uh, we appreciate that. So you know what? Go enjoy yourself an extra cup of coffee here on Friday. And again, we'll talk to you after Saturday's game when the Bruins take on the Philadelphia Flyers.